Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where the best offense is often a really strong defense. Today, we're going to go ahead and dig out this asteroid bunker area. Of course, I have a hand drill, but we're definitely not going to use that for start. It's going to take a lot of work because our bunker is 90% inside of this asteroid, which is good because it means that nobody can really shoot at our base. I mean, they can, but they're not going to take out the asteroid itself. They either have to do a lot of drilling, just like we're going to do with this micro driller machine, or try to shoot their way in through the entrances. To get started, I need to remote access the driller. But first, I think I need to turn off this connector, otherwise it won't actually show up on the screen. We can unlock it, but since our iron drives are not that strong, it'll just pull back into the original ship connector. There we go. And for now, so I don't have to worry about running out of oxygen or energy, I'm just going to sit inside of my main ship. This space pod has really been modified over time and has all the amenities needed in order to process any of the ore that we drill through and produce all the materials required to build everything for the bunker. Of course, when it comes to building, we're not actually going to be producing that much material from our ship since we already built a big bunker in order to make the blueprint in the first place. So when we get to that point, we'll typically just use the grinder, tear it apart piece by piece, transfer it to a welder, and then weld everything back together again. This driller is pretty efficient. The top, bottom, and width all are able to fit within the realm of the chewing bit itself. So you don't have to worry if you're drilling in a straight line where your driller is going to get stuck once you get past the drill bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by clearing around this entrance and kind of follow the walls as they go around. This part has been sped up for your convenience, so it won't take as long and you can kind of see the difference as we're drilling through the first part. You don't have to worry about ruining any of the components because this is just a hologram. I do recommend though, do not drill as far as each block. I would recommend just drilling halfway through the exterior blocks. That way they're still attached to the asteroid when you build it. There, that seems to be the left side. We'll check how much we have stored up, and it looks like we're about halfway there filling our inventory. I think I'm going to proceed until we're about 100% and then we can transfer it over to the space pod to break down. I don't necessarily need this ore, so if you don't need this ore, you can just continue drilling. It just won't pick up any of the stone, but it won't stop you from continuously drilling through the asteroid. I think overall, when I was timing this out, it only took about 10 to 15 minutes to do this entire entrance area to clear out all the stone and be able to finally get to the airtight hangar doors. Well, 
while you're doing a task like this, and you know it's going to take a while, it's a good time to think about what type of empire you would like to have. There are different types of empires that have existed over the centuries, and in Space Engineers you have a couple of options. You may want to venture the economic route and become a trader, where you fill contracts and find unique resources to fill these contracts. You may be able to reach an achievement of becoming very wealthy on the game, and the achievement will be unlocked. Or, you could always go the route of good versus evil. Say, the spiders on here, the spid and spat, I suppose, are considered evil, or they have a bad reputation. We made it to the airtight hangar doors. That's not too bad. Didn't take very long. We're going to continue to proceed to clear out the lower hangar area. Anyways, as I was saying, you could either join them if you can't beat them, so you could become evil yourself and have a terrible reputation. Or, you could have a very great reputation and start doing trades and meet everybody else that's an NPC, or if you're on a server, meet all the other players, and try to politically swoo them over or buy them out. Over time, the better you get, the bigger your empire will be, and the more influence you'll have. And then there's the third option. Just like the universe, there's three different types of energies in the universe, positive, negative, and there's neutral. Most people forget about the neutral. The neutral is, say, like a rogue entity. You don't really take sides for good or evil. Instead, you balance yourself out. Most Sigma leaders follow in this pattern. They are rogue. An Alpha leader will typically be in charge of either a positive or negative empire. But a Sigma leader doesn't necessarily have the same influence, but maintains and does most of the things themselves. They're typically a very strong leader, and can provide for themselves. On Space Engineers, when you first start out, if you're not on a server or online anywhere, chances are you'll be playing against the NPCs just like this. In that case, you might want to just be a rogue leader. you can decide to take out the individuals with all the negative influence, neutral influence, and positive influence. The choice is really up to you. Well, we finally made it to the back tunnel here. As I mentioned earlier, it will actually fit in this tunnel. We're not going to make it very wide, and it won't exceed going halfway through the block width. That's the entire lower hangar section. Honestly, it does not take too long to use this tool. The driller is quite a beast when it comes to taking out the stone and making it a pretty precise job. We don't have too much exposed around here. So even when they do try to attack us, the walls are mostly covered with rock. All right, now to get to the second level, I think I'm just gonna bore right through this air vent. It's not really there, but it gives us a good marking in the very center to make it to the second level. And the second level utilities are all connected to these conveyors. As we punch through this thing, you'll be able to see the room upstairs. Well, as we drill it out.
And that's the first room done. I didn't want to waste too much of your time, so I went ahead, did it all, and then fast forwarded. This room has your medical system in it, another air vent, and of course a controller and a few LED screens. Let me just clear this small bar of debris and we'll come back to this later in order to do the turrets. It's pretty spacious, like I mentioned before, and you should be able to decorate it a different way. It's kind of interesting being able to see through the floor Off to the next spot. For me, when it comes to leadership, I often like to take the Sigma approach. I like to be able to stand on my own two feet, but lead a crowd at the same time, and am not dependent on that crowd. This allows for less micromanaging and be able to empower the individuals that are following you. On Space Engineers, it's fairly easy to be a Sigma and still get the job done. Like here, we're using drones. If you have the automation set up, you may be able to program any of these micro drones to do everything that you want them to do without actually having to manually control them. In which case, that would free you up to be able to do a lot of different things. Well, I think that's the main entrance area of this utility section. You can see the turret. And mostly through the walls. It's kind of trippy looking at it sometimes. This is your utility room. It has the hydrogen generator, two nuclear power plants, an assembler, two O2H2 generators, the refinery set up with three speed modules and one yield module, and that's about it. I think now we should be able to drill directly to the surface, and then we'll come back and do the turrets and the antenna. That's the entire upper entrance tunnel. See how wonderful this driller actually fits through this narrow tunnel. And we didn't take out too much material where any of these blocks are not going to be completely surrounded by the asteroid. As we make our way back through here, on the right and the left of the main conveyor horizontal line are where our turrets and double pistons are going to be. Unfortunately, when you do a blueprint and if you have more than one piston connected to each other, only one of the pistons are going to show up. So we will have to drill it out first and then add the piston and turret again. Should be fairly close here. Just past the exterior wall, we should see the two conveyor tubes. Oh, and there they are. Now for these conveyor tubes, I'm going to just follow them vertically straight up, and it'll clear the area for the pistons and the Gatling turret. If you want to use different turrets, you can. The great thing about having this as a blueprint where they don't initially show up is that you can decide which turret you want to use without having to worry about overriding the hologram or anything. You can see the piston is coming into view. And remember, you want to clear everything from around the piston, otherwise it's going to have a hard time moving and it may not function correctly. Same thing when you get to the very top and you put the second piston on and you're building the turret. The turret lines will show you if you can or cannot build. You may need to get out your little hand drill 
and just clear out a little bit of the rock in the surrounding area in order for the turret to be actually constructed. I think we're almost there. Yep, there it is. We made it to the surface. To get this edge wide enough for us to fly all the way through, you may have to sit here for a second or two and let it clear out. And we've made it. A few adjustments since the hole is quite small and we'll be able to build the turret. So far, everything has come together very nicely. And let's go ahead and do a tour of this. I went ahead and skipped drilling out the antenna. I imagine you can only watch so much of a driller going around at one time. As we go through here, of course you've seen these two rooms before, so I'll just skip through. And you can see the entire piston has plenty of space. And here's where your antenna is going to be. You have to make sure that you clear all the way to the top of the antenna and it's not going to be stuck in the stone. Here's the second tunnel for the turret. Overall, that's about it. It's a pretty simple drilling operation and I recommend you give it a try. Well, as always, Thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your tips and tricks in the comment section below. I appreciate it.